What's up, y'all? Pay up, pay up. She say pay for the pussy, pay for the Hey! Pay for the pay for the pay. Ask God to give me. Cause I pray for the pray for the I tell all my break it up. Break it down. Hey, bag it up. Break it up, 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 break and this is going to be a cute episode. I'm not going to work today. We know that. So she's up at the park. And my kids are going to meet me here. They're eating breakfast. Let me turn this shit off. What is up, y'all? Is everybody having a great weekend? Let me get my notes out, honey, so we can finish this. Okay. I got to put it. Okay. Like I'm missing something. I tell all my hoes. Break it down. Back it up. Okay, so let's talk about... Let me see, what else is going on? Everybody have a good weekend? Tomorrow you gotta go back to work? They said the the um, the stream for Insecure was up early. I probably could have had this up earlier, but... Child. So it was cute. It was a really cute episode. I laughed a lot. I was like, okay, we're getting some developments here. I appreciated that. In the beginning, we see that Issa's in her new apartment, and of course, Daniel has helped her move too. I mean, like, he really comes through for her, like he told her, like, when you need it, but we're going to see how that's going to turn out because we see, you know, as we go through the episode, what happens later. Molly comes over as Daniel is leaving, and she brings this box in and the box has a broken glass in it. So Issa makes a comment about it being or her, at her brother's house and saying that, um, you know, they always tear, that's why you don't leave your shit at other people's house. And she was like, this was at your house. And she was like, Oh, I feel like that was get back for the broken vase. When Issa stayed with Molly, I feel like that was that, uh, Molly says it's weird at work. She doesn't, she doesn't feel like she belongs. She feels like a little, you know, a little outcast, outcast ish. You know what I'm saying? And she, she tells Issa, she just doesn't feel, doesn't feel right. And she's like, girl, just go in there and do your thing. You know who the fuck you are. Like, I really love that scene because I really love that they were just pumping each other up. Like Molly was telling Issa, this is your place, girl. Boom, you starting all new and everything. Da, da, da. They were just really pumping each other up and encouraging each other, which I think is a wonderful quality to have as a friend is to pump your friend up, encourage your friends. And I think that's wonderful that they're showing that. Molly starts going through Issa's shit and telling her, you need to throw this away, girl. We don't read Zane. What the fuck? She was like, uh, later Issa said, Tyler, Mary, Tyler Perry make, may make a movie out of this. Her ass is crazy. The writing, I laughed so many times in this episode, like loud laughter. And so she's going through all the stuff and Molly was like, throw this shit away, throw it away, throw it away. She was like, oh, these are mixed CDs that Lawrence made for me. She was like, bitch, throw it away. It's over with. This shit is over with. I get where Issa is kind of sentimental about some things you want to keep, but I understand where Molly's coming from because I'm one like when everything is done, if it's something that reminds me of that person, I'm throwing it away. I don't want it. I don't want nothing, nothing to do with it. So she finds her rap book later and she's reading through it and going through her raps and saying how simple, what she said, she was simple, how simple she was. She, she you still a little simple, Issa, um, but we're seeing you, I guess, trying to grow. I did see some moments of growth for Issa, which I like how they're showing. So they show Molly at work, honey. Molly's fashions, baby. I fucking, I'm here for every moment of her work fashions. That fucking suit was so fucking clean. I said, come on, Molly, that burgundy suit. Molly be looking at her hair, her little bob, little cut, little bob. It's so cute. So cute. She's at work and they're in the break, not the break room, the conference room. And they're talking about their, I guess, their suggestions on a, on a case. And 
Molly gives her suggestion and then Torian starts talking. Oh, well, kind of starts like talks. No, he did talk over her and then like completely took control of the conversation. When he spoke over her, the other people on the team kind of looked like they were pleased with what he did. And that gave me a sense that Molly is like an outcast and what she's feeling that she's right about how she's feeling about them because... They are treating her like, okay, bitch, you know, you want to act like you want to bring all your little white privileged ass, uh, what is it, docusign bullshit, even though it's not, I'm making a joke. But, you know, you want to bring all this shit over here and act like we're beneath what you came from. We talking over you and we don't care. Nobody's going to do anything about it. You're going to be the little outcast. So we're going to see. We see like Molly fucked up, like she fucked up. Later, um, she's talking to the two women about, the two women that were in the room about what Torian did. And they were really very, keeping very formal, you know, office, uh, you know, office talk, very formal with each other. Um, and then they code switched and was like, girl, you know, yeah, he, he's, you know, people, what's she say? Something about his ego and being, from Morehouse or going to Morehouse or something she said I don't know it's something like that and then they just started laughing right so then so then later Molly tells her tells these two women in the office that she wants to help them on this project they're working on and they were like really and she's like yeah I want to help I want to help you so we're we got that down right so she says she's gonna help these two women she feels a little bit more comfortable from just how she felt a moment ago uncomfortable with being like feeling like an outcast we're gonna get back to that so Issa's at work Frida comes downstairs and says that Issa couldn't go back in the field and she was like oh really great <laughs> okay so she was like oh, she gets ready to go to lunch so she's at lunch and she's talking to her food, singing to her food. Issa is so funny to me. I fucking love, I love Issa. I love her. I love, but she's, she, we, we'll get into it. So she's, so Nathan, when she calls Nansford, she couldn't remember his name. I thought it was funny. Do you think that she was faking that she couldn't remember his name or she actually didn't remember his name? She really couldn't remember his name. But maybe, knowing Issa, she probably remembered it. So she seems like somebody who will remember it because she had that encounter with him, remember the name when she sees him again. But I thought it was weird how he just popped up out of nowhere. Like, nigga, where did you come, like, where did you come from? I, I don't know. Um, I thought that was kind of weird. I don't know, something about that dude I don't like. I don't know if it's this lack of facial hair. I don't know what, it, like, this scruffiness that... Uh, I don't know. It just is grossing me out. Like something about dude is not sitting well with me. I mean, I think the character, their interaction with Issa and this guy, I think it's cute. But me, like personally looking at that dude, I don't find him attractive at all. Like not at all. So I be looking like, uh, okay, okay, Issa girl. So she meets up with the, I mean, he did not, not meet up, but he shows up there and she's talking about the tacos. I don't know where he came from. And she's telling him about the tacos. He orders a, orders the tacos and it's going to be an hour wait. So she looks like she's dismissing some priorities in order to hang out with this dude, which reverts back to like an old Issa type of behavior. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, Issa's growing, but then you see moments where she's like, she reverts back to old habits and you get in, involved with people and you start, you start reverting back to old habits. What happened? So they start walking around and she was supposed to pick up somebody from a turn. It said, I'm at terminal six. Where are you? I don't know who, who was she supposed to pick up? Who was the text message from? I need to go back and see. Didn't show, did it? I don't know who it was. So she starts walking around um, this part of Los Angeles with this guy named Nathan and they're walking around. And I really love the, well, he, he made a comment talking about LA people don't like to walk. Why do we need to walk? Everything is far. Everything you have to drive. You cannot. The public transportation system sucks in Los Angeles. You have to drive to get to other places. Okay. Y'all need to stop moving down there. So people that live there and are from there can drive around. Because there's so much traffic down there. Because there's a, no public, no really good public transportation system like you have in San Francisco, you know what I mean? The Bay Area, 
or New York, even though our when I saw that Democratic, that gubernatorial debate with Cynthia Nixon and Cuomo, and they said it was going to cost $300 billion to change the subway system, child please. But yes, LA people don't like to walk, so the fuck what? Didn't I tell you the other day that it was a car culture? That's because we drive everywhere and you have to be comfortable in your car. You have to, your car is like your second home, really, if you live in Los Angeles. So you have to have a comfortable automobile and you know a lot of people think that you have to have a fly ass automobile it's nothing wrong with it as long as you can afford it no problem her park they're walking around the Mert park i love that she was shouting out black owned businesses in the Mert park um i love that she's doing because a, a lot of changes because of gentrification is happening in um, southern california and it's specifically los angeles south los angeles southwest los angeles a lot of changes are happening to the point where where like maybe five or seven five to seven years ago places where you're seeing white people walk down the street walking their dogs with their babies in their strollers they would never go down there because it was too um urban you know what i'm saying but now they're moving down there moving people out of their homes property taxes are rising people selling their grandma's house all of that shit is going on in los angeles and i'm glad that she is taking a moment like taking you Issa has said before that Los Angeles is a character in the story, quite the same as New York was a character in Sex and the City. She's saying Inglewood, Los Angeles, that area, Lemur Park, all of us in that area is a character in the story. And I love that she is including that in, her, in the story. I love it. It is like, I love the fact that she's just showing everything and just showing it and giving it that love because it pretty soon it's not going to be us down there it's really like archive this shit you understand what i'm saying oh i'm getting emotional anyways they walking down the street and they see chad's bus bench bitch when they show chad's face smiling i holler because chad was so corny to me he was that typical corny ass i was getting ready to name off a greek organization that he probably belongs to but i'm not gonna do that <laughs> i will not do that but chad is a corn he's a cornball like super corny walking through the jungle um and they talk start talking about truth or dare they playing truth or dare and so he asked her when was your last relationship and she was like five years ago but she doesn't mention nothing because whatever you was having with daniel i don't know what that was but she only talked about her relationship that she was in a committed relationship five years with larry best buy larry what what i was wonder what lawrence is doing <laughs> Lauren's not gonna be in this season. He's gonna be in next season, right when Issa get into a good, healthy ass relationship. He's gonna pop his black ass up with a mixed CD. I already know it. I already fucking know it. That's what's fucking gonna happen. I love the fact that she admitted that she cheated. When you see that this can possibly be a relationship to, to develop, like you like this person and you wanna hang out with this person and get to know this person, I think it's very important for you to start off like just tell the truth like just be honest now and just be transparent and then that's that's the best you can do that is the absolute best you can do and i, I was like okay come on growth isa for being transparent and saying what happened and she was like i cheated i was wrong da da da, da. he didn't deserve it but i mean well where are we going where are we? We have other, you know, perspectives of that. A lot of people do have other perspectives about that, but okay. Back into her childhood home, which I thought was stupid. I didn't like that. I was like, okay, this is this is okay for the story, but I didn't like that uh, that was his suggestion. I didn't like that he suggested that. If she suggested it, maybe I would have felt like, okay, Isa, you know, you being silly or whatever. I don't know this. You're a stranger. You just popped up the second time out of the blue. Where did you come from? And now you're telling me to break into my childhood home. No, we're not doing that. What are you? No. They dare each other to go skinny dipping. And the way Issa covered her titties and her vagina, she jumped in the water. <laughs> and then it was cold. <laughs> it was cold. Okay, so they're two strangers skinny dipping or whatever. So they're, share they're in the pool, right? Sharing stories. And... Um, I think that was very intimate, like t them telling the stories. It was very intimate. It was an intimate part of 
it was intimacy. They were sharing. First of all, you're naked. You're in water. To me, water, well, not to me, water symbolizes emotion. I just think that it was in that moment they were sharing. I thought it was like a cool moment. But then I kept thinking like, you're in a pool in somebody else's backyard with this person you've only met twice. But, you know, stranger things happen. They start talking about why he's here, why he came to L.A. I got all kind of red flags from his explanation. I don't know about y'all, but... I felt like you just getting your stuff. You don't have no strings. You don't have no, no. I feel like he does have some strings. I feel like that's why he left. I don't know what well, we're going to see. Maybe that's too dramatic of a story to kind of develop. Like maybe he's not co being completely honest with her. But I think like for the drama of the show, if that might be too much that he's, you know, has this past. You know what I mean? But. I was getting red flags from the, I just left. I just got my, sh I didn't, you know, I just got up and left. And like, where are you staying? You was in the live. I don't know. I don't know. We need to get, we get, need to get to know Nansford. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. So they get, <laughs> they, the, somebody comes home and they said, call the, call 911, call the cops. Issa jumps out of that pool, baby. When she slipped, I was not fucking ready. I was not ready. That shit was hilarious. It was so fucking funny. Oh my God, it was so funny. And how he was like, oh, you afraid to get your hair wet? She was like, honey, I moisturized. You better get the fuck out of here. Get out of my face with that. Don't try it. Do not try it. Get Issa's house. And he's eat, you know, they heat up the tacos. He was like, I got to eat the tacos. And she was like, okay. I mean, it's a microwave in my house. And I'm like, okay, for the obligatory HBO, you know, sexy scene, I was I was ready for it. Do you hear me? But it did not happen that way. But I was ready for it. Because I was like, after all that, all after all that you sharing in that pool and all like all of those moments were like truly kind of bonding moments, like them breaking into this house in the pool bonding walking around la her sharing herself with him those are a lot of intimate moments and i was like okay well if they end up fucking i mean it only makes sense to me but whatever <laughs> they don't do it they start kissing or whatever and then when i was like okay they're about to get it popping so they start kissing and then the door <laughs> the music stops <laughs> And then the doorbell rings. It's a badass little kid. He's not bad. I won't say he's bad. But he was like, oh, what y'all doing in there? Eating tacos and kissing on the mouth? <laughs> she was like, little boy, get up. It was funny because when she opened the door, she looked up. <laughs> like, to look at an adult. Oh, God, it was so funny. And then she looked down. That little boy. He was like, my mama said, what? You changed the locks. She was like, I did not change the locks. That shit was funny to me. It reminded me of Martin's character when he would be messing with Gina. What was that little boy's name? Ross. Was it Roscoe? When he used to snot in his nose. Oh, God. That's one of the best television shows ever. But that shit was hilarious to me. So they, he ends up leaving. They give each other a kiss or whatever. And a nice, passionate, you know, lovely kiss. And then he, he leaves. All right, so we get back to Molly's at the therapist, right? So Molly's talking to the therapist, and let me just give a shout out to the therapist. I fucking love everything about that lady. I don't know what it is. I want her to have a spinoff. I love the book. I love her office. I love that bookcase. Oh my God, that bookcase is so sick. I think I've talked about it before because I love that book. I love that lady's aura. Like who, that, whoever that lady is, who is that lady? I need to go look at her because she looks, I love everything about her his aesthetic. I love it. She's sitting down with Molly. Molly's talking about, the work at work what is like how she's feeling at work how she's fitting in or whatever and she says molly don't you think you should kind of what does she say like contribute instead of trying to be on top instead of trying to get to the top why don't you engage and start you know being contribute to the community instead of trying to be the leader of the community you know what i'm saying and so she was like i don't know she really had a dilemma with that and i was like molly because that's after she said that she that's when she offered to help those girls with the project but then she turned around and reneged on the project to help the other dude i was like molly you made the wrong fucking choice you went against your therapist's suggestion 
she suggested that you and i thought that was going to be good okay but molly wants to be the boss and so she's having a dilemma do you want to lead the group or you want to be a part of the group but you need to be a part of the group first she needs to go up the ranks right that's what she needs to do it's fucking hot in here the edible kicked in look she needs to go up the ranks that's what she needs to fucking do She's not doing that. She went against her goddamn therapist's um, what she, um, advice. You know what I'm saying? Then she mentions in talking out loud, she mentions Dro. And the and the um, therapist said, who's Dro? Baby. M Molly's face was looking real crazy like, oh, shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I can't wait until they unpack that shit. I can't wait. Issa's back at work, and um, what happened? What happened when Issa came? She was back at work. She has her place. Basically, she quit her job. She quit everything. They they came. Frida came up to her asking her to do something. She looked around the office, and it's just nothing but white people. And she's like, "I just don't. This is not the place for me. I already. I am going to vocalize what she was thinking. This is not the place for me. I do not belong here. They're not representing who I am, what my purpose is, what I'm, what I, where I am right now in my life. So she quit her job. She quit her job. She threw all the shit away. Lawrence mix CDs and everything." fresh light that's exactly it was that's exactly the name of the episode i think it was a i love the episode i was like yes finally i feel like i watched a great episode and it was good and i enjoyed it anyways tell me what y'all think do y'all think molly made the right decision and reneging on the girls doing the project to go work with the male bosses you think that nathan is suspect because i do what do you think about her being honest about cheating? Do you guys think that that is something that we need to do in entering new relationships? If you did, if you cheated, do you disclose that to your new partner? Because that may or may not affect how, you know, what the next steps are. So do you do that or not? Do you think it was a red flag that he suggested they break into this house? Am I being like to stick in the mud? I mean, what? All right, anyways, let me know what y'all think. I uh, thank you for all the comments and suggestions. Oh, I'll tell y'all later. But, oh, Married to Medicine, let me tell you. I'm going to watch Married to Medicine, but y'all going to get Married to Medicine on Tuesdays because I, I, I don't even know when the Real Housewives of Orange County comes on, but you got Insecure, Orange County, Married to Medicine. I already hear some, some shit about that damn Scorpio Heavenly we going to see, but we'll see. Um, I already hear some shit. They delving into her shit already. First episode. Okay, but anyways, y'all let me know what y'all think of the episode. And we'll talk chat chat later. All right, lovelies. I'm being nosy. Okay, I'm about to go to the park. All right, y'all. Take care of each other.